Welcome to Fitzroy, Melbourne's eldest suburb, created in 1839. It eventually became a municipality in 1858, but the name Fitzroy was named after Governor Charles Augustus Fitzroy. But Australians can't say Fitzroy, they'd probably throw a T into it, so you've got Fitzroy. <laughs> now, that would... Ruby. That's Ruby's guest appearance, by the way. Now, Fitzroy was going to be called Newtown, but there was a new town in New South Wales, so you can't have two new towns, can you? No, you can't, Peter. And don't forget, we were still under the colony of New South Wales at that period of time. And I'm here with Ruby and Peter, and we're going to take you on a walk around Fitzroy and see some of the interesting architecture. Okay, on our way, sunshine. Back in around 1858, the building behind me was constructed. It's a nice little example of the buildings of Fitzroy for that era. The area of Fitzroy was basically a very working class area, uh, and so these houses supported the workers working in factories of the day surrounding Fitzroy and within Fitzroy. suburb that changed through the periods. The terraces behind me were built around the 1880s, uh, but as you've seen earlier, there is examples of architecture around the 1860s and even earlier around Fitzroy. So this particular pocket, which is south of Gertrude and just north of Victoria down the other end here, is the more gentrified part of Fitzroy. And you can see that in terms of the larger buildings uh, and they're generally in a better state of repair. And of course Fitzroy reflected the changes in time and after the First World War with the increased immigration that came to the country, yep, you see a little bit of the Greek and Italian influence as well. you can actually see these um, buildings that were built in 1854 with bluestone and the reason why they built with bluestone was because there was a shortage of bricks so they couldn't afford to build with bricks and they built with bluestone hey Joe there's actually a plaque in bluestone that says AD 1854 so it must have been built around 1854 <laughs> it's obvious Peter <laughs> <laughs> moving on Well, 
we finally have sat down and you know why for Peter. Well the nice part of most walks is really <laughs> to have a coffee and a little treat along the way. So we bought some gluten-free <gasps> and our coffee. Raspberry pear cakes. A minute on the lips and a life on the hips, but hey. Let's go for it. And the verdict is they're okay. Oh good. I'm looking forward to it. could easily walk past this reasonably simple structure now known as All Saints Parish Hall. But what caught my attention are the corrugated iron sides and thinking if they're original it's got to be pretty old. So this structure actually goes back to about 1854 and at that time it was actually imported. It was a prefabricated building imported from the UK. It was actually Liverpool I believe where it was manufactured. Transported out here a bit like IKEA, you know, comes in kit form and they put it together. But it's also got some very interesting little, what are they, ionic architectural columns on the side. So that's a, it makes for a, a very interesting little building. And also the structure, it's All Saints, and All Saints were typically represented as Catholic, but it's not actually of a Catholic style. It was originally a Wesleyan church or building, uh, and you can actually see a similar structure with the Nichols building and the Christian church that was around the corner not too far away. William Abbs migrated to Australia in 1854 and after a few months he actually began the funeral parlour. He married his wife Mary in St Mark's Church in 1857. They had 15 children, only six survived. Uh, William was a very well respected man of his time and his business was known throughout Victoria. His son Edward carried on his business after William died. To the left of me the houses were built for the Apps family and beside it were were the garages or stables of the time. This sculpture represents courage it's a dedication to the GLBTQ members of the Fitzroy community. I would suggest the broader community than that as well. Now the lion was represented in the Wizard of Oz as looking for courage. And so with this, you have someone shedding that particular skin to actually find their own courage to be who they are. And I think it's a wonderful representation of what this community might stand for. The sculpture is also in memory of Ralph McLaren. And, uh, and Ralph was the first um, openly gay elected member to the Fitzroy Council. I believe he later became mayor as well. Okay, we've come to the end of our walk. Just behind me is the old Napier Hotel. We've thoroughly enjoyed our walk today, but if you'd like to do this walk, pick up a brochure from the local library or go to the city of Yarra and find, some, and find the notes. The Fitzroy Founding Footsteps brochure is what you're looking for to do your walk. That's all for this adventure and we'll see you next time. We'll be looking at North Fitzroy next. See you guys. Bye. Bye.